Hi everybody, my name is Vasil and uh, I bought another boat. At this point you might be asking yourself who in their right mind buys a, another sailboat? This guy. This guy buys a second sailboat. First thing we're going to do is take a tour of the boat and before we do that uh, I'm going to go ahead and apologize for the current condition of this boat because the last couple of days uh, have been quite hectic. We'll go over that in future episodes. So I'm going to go ahead and apologize to you guys for the mess and the state that this boat is in. It's been absolute pandemonium. So let's get started with the tour. Starting at the stern of the boat, we are on the outside. Here is what the deck looks like. There is my boom with a very nice sail cover. And if we step along forward, we can see that there's solar panels on the deck that will be explained in future episodes. But you can see that the deck of this boat is in very good condition, very good condition. I even have a jib, a roller furling. It goes all the way up to the mast. And there we go, looking at the boat backwards from from the front of where we are. Here we are in beautiful, beautiful Glorieta Bay in San Diego, and we're gonna talk about what's up here. So the railing's in good condition. The roller furling is in good condition. And then here we have the Maxwell winch that came with this boat. This thing is almost brand new. And to operate it, here we have some broken switches. So these are no longer functioning, as we can see take this out there are no actual switches so I could I could theoretically operate this by just connecting the wires but I do have some new ones on the way that will be covered in a future episode so things here are in very very good shape the safety lines are amazing they look like they're in fantastic shape obviously stainless steel no rust going forward and then the jib sheets are also in very good condition so there we have the port red and starboard green sheets are in great condition this boat does have upgraded hatches so the original configuration for this hatch was different the previous owner had replaced these hatches with lumar and had to fiberglass them in because the original configuration was much different than this but this is nice we have hatches that can lock from the outside and from the inside fantastic the mast in good condition all of the rigging in good condition this boat was actually being raced uh six months ago so everything in terms of sailability on this boat is as it should be there we have the c40 indicating the cal 40 uh the sail cover obviously in very good condition there is the main hatch for the boat and moving backwards there's my dinghy floating in the bay in beautiful beautiful downtown san diego glorieta bay there is the golf course so i just wanted to show you guys what my view looks like right now continue on following the boom there are the winches the winches work great there is some more rigging to move the boom and if we take a look the sheets here are also in very very good condition there is what the back of the boat looks like the stern this is quite a mess i have my outboard fuel tank a battery and the engine uh, i'll be going over how how this engine got here and if you followed me so far for a long time you uh you probably recognize this engine from a different boat that would be my first boat but that's for a different episode and we can see here that the railing back here is also in very good condition so the deck the deck here is fantastic this boat is clean very clean on the outside there's minor things that need to be done like sanding down some of this wood and repolyurethaning it but for the most part if you guys have been following me for a long time this compared to my other boat is like brand brand spanking new and while we're back here, let's talk about some very cool things that this boat has that my previous boat did not have. These are all luxuries to me. It has speakers, outside speakers. It has speakers on the inside too. We'll show that when we get there, but 
I can control the balance from the outside to the inside so I can have the speakers on outside, inside, or any other configuration that I'd like as well. This boat has a tiller instead of a wheel. I actually quite like that because from what I've heard, if you are learning how to sail for the very first time, a tiller will give you a lot more experience. No, it's not as, as easy per se as a wheel, but a tiller, if you're learning how to sail, is as good as it gets because you get a lot more feedback from, from the boat. Let's step past this jumbled mess of solar panels to the inside of the boat. And this is a little bit acrobatic, but here we are, guys. This is it. This is what the inside of this boat currently looks like. Obviously, a bomb had gone off in here. Let's walk to the mast, turn around, and I'll show you what the interior of this boat looks like and go over some of the features. On the port side of the boat, we have electronics. All of my switches are over here. Everything works. Guys, I can't, I can't tell you. I can't tell you how amazing it is to have onboard power and have everything function as it should. So all of these can be turned on, cabin lights. Let's turn on the navigation, should be somewhere here. And there is a working radio, guys. Everything works. This is amazing. So let's, let's turn that off. But we do have the stereo system here. We do have 12 volt power. Uh, this thing sucks. You'll see in a future episode, um, this thing is a massive liar. I hate you, I hate you so much. You've caused me many, many headaches. Um, back here, we have 110 plugs. That is when we have shore power. Uh, my battery charger at the moment sitting right there. That needs to move. But in here, we have a refrigerator. And guess what? This thing actually works. Thank you so much to the previous owner for having left a whole bunch of alcohol for me to consume at the airplane. This needs a lot of cleaning, but it works. It works, guys, that's amazing. I can't tell you how excited I am to actually have a working fridge on a sailboat. The trick with this thing is you have to watch yourself when you decompress the spring because the previous owner told me that there's been many times where he had his head almost knocked off by this thing. So when you do compress it, just be mindful of where your head is located. Taking a further look in here, there is the bilge pump. So this is not an automatic bilge pump. You do have to press the switch when you want to operate it. So that that is okay. Uh, I'll probably add a float at some point later. Here we have the power that operates the windlass. So this is a powered windlass. This, this runs all the way back to the front of the boat for the anchor. And here we have, I believe what's called the quarter berthing, but it has a good amount of space. This is technically a race boat. So the good thing is behind here are two massive 255 amp hour batteries. One is on either side for balance. So that is fantastic. This gives me plenty of electrical storage for all of my needs. And they could, as you can see, the wires are currently in jumbled mess because I had to do some crazy charging on here. Also, fantastic. This boat already came with cushions for, for the deck. So I currently have the cushions sitting here because I, I need the space. They're, they're currently tucked away, but that is good. We also have a hatch for for um, letting some of the exhaust fumes out from the engine. We'll talk about the engine in a little bit, but let's get to the starboard portion of this boat. Here we have what is the kitchen, the galley. The galley has these nice cabinets. That's excellent for storage. And it does have a gimbal, gimbal stove. Look at that. Look at that. I know, I know I'm getting excited about things that may seem simple to you guys, but if you if you've been following me for quite some time, you know the situation I've had on my previous boat. So this is some high-end luxury stuff. Three burner stove on a gimbal, and it does have an oven. Oven! This is luxurious. I can cook so many things in here. Fantastic. Now the sink. The sink actually works. So if we take a look over here, we have two pedals. The pedals operate two pumps. So one is getting water directly from the outside. So if we want to do some salt water rinsing, we can just operate a foot pump like this. And that will give us some salt water. If we go ahead and operate the foot pedal on the left-hand side, that will give us some fresh water. The fresh water storage on this boat is located 
inside of the keel. I believe it is uh, either a 60 or a 90 gallon storage container, but there it is. There is a sink, everything works. There's an anchor over here that I dug up that's gonna have to be hidden. And the lights on this side don't work. This one is busted, that will need to be replaced. The light on this one does not work. You know why? Because I am stupid and I don't have the cabin lights on. So while we're here, let me just show you. We have working cabin lights and this one actually turns red if you need it to preserve your eyes from, from light. And this one works as well. Let's check this guy. This one works. I believe this one doesn't work. Yeah. No, it does work. Okay, cool. All four work. Fantastic. Let's open up these doors. Take a look inside. So there are the electronics dials for the diesel engine. Everything is kind of tucked away. It's kind of nice. You have easy access. And boom, close that door. Take a look on the other side. Again, easy access if you want to do some electrical work on the outside and make some modifications. That appears to be a beacon. Not quite sure, but there it is. There's a couch or a futon. I don't know what you call this one, a boat, but it can technically sleep two people. So two people can easily fit on this side and it is in good condition. This is not the most comfortable mattress. So perhaps some upgrades to be made, but again, a place to lay down, relax, kick back. There are the speakers, indoor speakers. Amazing, amazing. And on the other side, we do have some more birthing space not a lot so two people could sleep here i wouldn't say they would be comfortable but they could there is the other speaker and we also found some hammocks on board i did place those over there they're just kind of hanging and the other cool thing is this boat came with a lot of extras so the sheets i found on board appear to be in very good condition so there's a lot of extra sheets and all of my stuff is kind of hanging out on this side I know, it's a mess guys, I apologize. There's my mast. The mast is in good condition. It does leak a little bit when we have excessive moisture on the outside, so that will need some sealant, but no big deal. Overall, the mast itself is in good condition. And if we step here, what we have is the bathroom. So good news is everything works. Um, not so good news is it does need a little bit of cleanup, a little bit of refresher stuff. The light works, um, plumbing works. There's a holding tank in here. I believe it's a nine gallon tank. The owner had said that he does have a 22 gallon tank that I can uh, have and upgrade the holding status for this boat. But there it is. There's the bathroom that works and does not have a faucet, but that's okay. Stepping out of the bathroom, there's a closet actually a relatively big closet there's a lot of stuff here this boat came with i think like 10 or 12 extra life jackets and some additional safety stuff in the dry bag but overall there we go decent sized closet there are the chain plates for for the mast for the rigging and let me show you guys the v-berth so the v-berth is actually very big this is a very comfortable V-berth. It did come with a custom mattress. So you can see how thick this mattress is. So we can actually obviously configure this V-berth in a lot of different ways. This can be moved. So if you want some extra mobility in here, but this does need some cleanup. So you can see the paint has been peeling. There is a leak at the deck joint that does provide some moisture, which is why we have some mold and some peeling paint. But overall, pretty good condition. We have some side hatches, we have the main hatch, and a lot of ventilation that could be built into this V-berth. I like this, I like this a lot. And I do wanna give you guys a little bit of perspective just how big this V-berth is. So I have a tape measure running all the way back and we can see that it is almost eight foot deep. That is a big, big V-berth. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and measure the width. I needed two hands for that. So the tape measure is running across the width and we are over eight foot in terms of width. So guys, you can see 
just how big this V-Birth is. This is very comfortable. Over the last week or so, I have been playing around with my sleeping configuration. I know you're supposed to sleep on that side with your head facing this way, but for whatever reason, I tried a couple nights sleeping with my head in that direction, and I just happened to switch back to, to this configuration. I don't know why, it's just more appealing for me. So there's my view from, from where I sleep. Going past the pillows, we have the anchor chain locker, road locker. So in here, pretty good condition. There is the windless engine. There are the windless electronics. All of this is in good condition. Everything works except for the wiring for the switches. We talked about that earlier. I did purchase a hundred foot of chain. So please look out for a future episode where I will be adding an additional chain. So a hundred foot of chain to this anchor so that we can have more chain upon situations where we need it. Underneath here, we have some very thick gauge wire. This is what provides the power to the windless motor and that runs all the way back to the batteries. So I'm very happy about that. Obviously ample, ample storage. So this side looks good. Other side, not, not so much guys, not so much. This is in need of some cleanup. Obviously some rotten wood from, from the leak that is occurring right there at the deck joint that will need to be sealed with some silicone and done right because I, I don't want any more moisture in here. So I will have to take care of that before any repairs are done on the shelving. Let's talk about the engine. Yep, yep, that, that, that needs to be talked about. The engine for this boat lives here underneath of the steps. Everything is disconnected. So we lift this and hold it down ever so gently, just like that. Yep, uh, there, there it is. This is a Perkins 4108, the 50 horsepower diesel engine. And as as you might be telling from the way I'm talking, is um, it's shot. It's not working. So it's mounted in reverse. There is the transmission. So the engine is actually mounted backwards to provide power to here. And then it goes through a different shaft into the prop. Problem with this engine was about six months ago, the previous owner had notified me that some water got into it and it had seized. So if we open up the cover right here where the oil goes for the valves, um, that is rusted. So this motor is completely seized, is done. Not 100% sure what my plans on this engine are. Guys, please follow along and I will provide updates in future episodes. But there is a busted Perkins 4108 50 horsepower diesel engine that used to, used to power this boat. Now it's time to jump outside and go in the dinghy so I can show you what the outside of this boat actually looks like. And take a look at this beautiful, beautiful boat from the outside there is the engine setup again guys that will be covered in a future episode this is what she looks like from the outside she is a boat that was designed for racing we will also be going over history of this boat in a future episode but overall the paint is in decent condition there definitely needs to be some touch-ups on the blue portion and the bottom paint is actually relatively good it does need some scrubbing it's been sitting for a couple of months without a good cleaning but guys Look at this. Look at this beautiful, beautiful racing 1966 Cal Jensen 40. Hope everybody enjoyed that tour. If you guys want to leave some comments in the comment section down below to let me know what you think of my new boat. It is called Shibui and it is the legendary Cal 40. Thank you to everyone for watching this episode. There's going to be a lot more content coming out because now I am the proud owner of not one, but two sailboats.
So we're gonna go over a lot of things between the two boats. If you're new to this channel, please like, share, and subscribe, and check out my other videos on my first boat. That is a 1974 Columbia 45. So between the two boats, again, lots of content. And this boat is gonna be sailed relatively soon. If you guys also have the opportunity, I did set up the Patreon. Uh, the link will be somewhere over here. Not sure how to do that quite yet, but it is Ambiguous Globetrotter at Patreon. So if you have a chance to donate to this cause, please do. It will greatly, greatly help out with the endeavor of having, of having two sailboats. <laughs>